Hi everyone, welcome back to another Strangely Us podcast with myself, Mark English. Strangely Us. Strangely Us and the lovely... Wendy. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Where have well, you been? Well, I've been seeing yeah. you mainly. <laughs> um, shh, shh, shh. How spoilers. Are you? Yes, spoilers. Um, hope you're all doing well. We've got obviously Henry here as well, the lovely Henry. Yeah, he he's, wouldn't be without us. Yeah, he's a bit of a star in his own right, you see, his young Henry. Um, so what are we talking about today on this podcast, young Wendy? Well, apparently, Mr. Mark, we're talking about has our life turned out the way that we wanted it to be? Yeah, interesting. Are you a person who sort of planned out your life? We're talking about if you're a bit older, obviously. Has your life planned out the way you wanted it to? Or did you just go with the flow? Are you a planner or a flower? <laughs> I would definitely say I'm a planner. However, uh, is, it, is it working? It's working, darling. Are you yes. sure, it's darling? Well, it's absolutely Please working. Check it, darling. Now the, yes, it's absolutely fine. Thank you. <laughs> That's just the mic. <laughs> it hasn't turned. Uh, every, I'm a planner and I like to plan. I feel, I think planners, planning people are people that like to be in control, as in a lot of ways. You in control? Surely not. Like, surely not. Not vu. Not moi. You and me. Mm. Uh, no, seriously, I, I prefer to be a planner. What about yourself? I go with the flow. Mm-hmm. I'm not a planner at all. Oh, well, that's not technically true. I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, mm. you might, you know, there, there is planning like, oh, I need to do that next week, you know, but yeah. at, as far as life choices have gone, yeah, no, I don't think I've ever done anything. Oh, okay. So you just go along with the breeze. Yeah, I should have, maybe I should have planned a few things back in the day. Yeah. You know, you've been married, mm-hmm. I haven't. Mm-hmm. Marriage... I'm a bit like with Bill Maher, who knows Bill Maher, the talk show host in America, who does um, uh, Real Time with Bill Maher. He doesn't understand the concept of marriage, nor do I. Ah. Oh. I don't quite get it. Well. And then you I, should know from I, experience, I, darling. Yeah, he says, darling, from, from experience. Um, I think it's either for you or how, it's how, not. How many times? Just a few. Just a few. I won't go into details. And never regretted, I I, never regretted either. No, of course not. Because it made me... You know, first of all, uh, really good friends with, you know, um, one, mm-hmm. and the other one was a great life lesson. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't regret either, because I think either it makes you who you know, it, it makes you build your character. Um, I think it, t- it helps you turn into the person you are now. I mean, I, I if we're talking about our lives and we're talking about what where we've turned out out to be. If I sit here at 52, if I won't go back to 20... Hard to believe, I know. Thank you, darling. I'll pay you later. Um, If I go back to 25, Mm -hmm. everything I thought I was going to do at 25 has not happened. What were those things that you... Are you willing to divulge? Well, I think most... I think going back to... uh, um, What was I? 95, I was 25. And I think you... You hope for a family. I, I hoped for a family and um, mar- a happy marriage, and uh, you know, good health and and travel and, and all stuff. And it didn't work that way. Interesting. Um, the family. I've never wanted kids. Yeah. I don't understand that family unit. I know I'm very. I actually I think a lot of people do things like this, but I've never been that mm. family orientated. Um, as I think the great. Um, um, Henry Rowland said he's the same. He thinks the same. He goes, my DNA stops here. That's a very good. Quote. Yeah, my DNA stops here. Never wanted kids. What would the world do without it? Yeah, you don't want any more Englishes running around. Well, I don't know. Little junior ones. Yeah, and my brother won't obviously can't won't have kids <laughs> for obvious reasons. What about you when you were twenty five? Though, what were you, what were you hoping for? I what was I hoping for? Um, what was I twenty five? I was living just down the road actually. Mm. Um, do you know, I honestly don't think I had any ambitions. I was just going with the flow, mm. trying to make films. Um, I had no grand ambition. Mm. No grand ambition, especially career-wise, which I don't even... F- it's another weird thing. Maybe I, I think differently to everyone else. I don't think what you, defi- what you do as a job. You know when you, you meet someone, mm. especially someone you haven't seen for a while, you say, oh, I don't know. And they go, oh, what, what, what do you do? What do you, what's your job? You know, or what, mm. what do you do for a living? It's a totally irrelevant question, really. Mm. You know, I wish people could actually say to somebody, oh, by the way, are you happy? Really deep question, you know, but people don't do that. It's like, what do you do for a living? Mm. Oh, nice to see you. Oh, you got, oh, you had a family? I think it's just the normal life yeah, of course. questions that people ask. I mean, 
when I was young, I wanted to, when I was really young, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, I've not heard that uh, one before. Really? Well, darling, I do keep some secrets. So do I. (laughs) Really? Yes, not many. I'm quite, I'm actually quite an open book. Yeah, I wanted to be a teacher. Teaching anything Uh, particular? Kindergarten. Kindergarten? Kindergarten uh, age. Uh Um, I really was drawn to that, wanted to, you know, I loved, I loved kids and I wanted to do the little, the little people, you know, because I think you've got your, they're like sponges at that age and you can really, you know, help them and put some good stuff in there mm-hmm. because well after all when they get to teens and everything like that there's a lot of things already played out or playing out so i wanted i met my dad had been a police officer uh-huh. um and i think it was kind of like are you gonna go in in that role and i was like no i never wanted to go in and follow him in his profession not because i didn't think it was a great job but i wanted to be a teacher um, and then I was, re- and then also I wanted to be a nun. Now I know you might find that really hard to understand. <laughs> it's true. When I was, t- when oh I god, was- dead space on the podcast. You'd never do that. You wanted to be a nun. I did. Yeah, I really felt drawn to the church. Well, that's a whole other discussion on religion. But um, <laughs> what? what- <laughs> Speechless, um, okay. <laughs> what, what? Why? Um, I know you probably don't think like. Why do you think like that at the time? Do you know I I wasn't brought up in a Catholic family. Um, it was just weird. I had this calling to to give. It's going to sound so bad to give myself to God, and to which give, God whatever no 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 you said Catholic that's well and that is a see religion that's a whole new subject I could go down um but I I wanted to to devote myself to a higher purpose and also um help others you could do that without all that yeah but something about the habit called to me (laughs) you don't believe yeah I do believe you I just find it I just find because you look at me now and you're like how can that be possible Mm. but it's true I did and and how old were you then when you I was had... about nine or ten. And oh then... right, you weren't, you weren't an adult then. No, and then I was and then I went into the teaching. So that was sort of the and my mum kept saying to me, You what? You wanna be a nun? And I was like, Yeah, I think it's you know, maybe it was past life stuff, I don't know. But yeah, you know, I was I wanted to. And my mum said, Well, I think you'll find you'll grow out of it because, you know, you love children and you wanna be a mum and all that lot. And she was she was so right. Obviously I did grow out of it, but um it's a fine profession if you want to call it a profession or a vocation because you know very devoted and and you sacrifice so much but um as time went on it obviously became apparent that i didn't want to be in that okay you can ask me those a question no 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 i think we might do a podcast on religion one day mm-hmm. although i'm i'm well over open to as everyone knows i'm well open to open continue consciousness we're all part of something bigger mm. But it's this religion I have a problem with. Okay. Father. You know, yeah. Um, each of their own, whatever makes you... I always say, whatever makes you a better person. Mm. So you didn't know when you were young what you wanted to do? Uh, the only thing I wanted to do, when um, Star Wars came out yeah. and changed a lot of people's lives, especially if you're into quite creative people and into filmmaking, I wanted to be a special effects technician. Yeah. We're going to special effects and mod- model yeah. build. Most people in my age want to be footballers and that, um, which I have no interest in because I'm not into sport but yeah um, I want to be a special effects technician I actually wanted to be a Doctor Who's assistant as well did you? having cool I really like in, in my sort of when Peter Davison was there I want to be Tegan you know I wanted to I really wanted to do that but I well, think of course someone who's actually done a Doctor Who story with Peter Davison yeah I know yes audio drama Jealous. for a big finish thank you Jealous. yes um, it's very nice did you ever want to be something like that like a in- no not really well that that's in the acting. Do you mean in a fantasy role? No, I can't say I've ever thought... What about, that. I mean, acting you wanted to go into, though, didn't you? I did a bit of it. I still do a little bit of it. I'm doing a, uh, a little film for my friend coming up, whenever that's going to be. I just signed a contract for that. Um, but, yeah, if something comes up. But not, I've never pursued it actively all the, as, I want to be an actor, you know, mm. no. So when was it you, disco- you discovered in your life that you, this is, this is for me, this is what I want... It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't. No. The to answer your question, the nearest it's come, the nearest it's come, 
is when I made my movies, mm. the, Ra- the Ravenswood movies. Mm. And actually, I've got to see what I'm doing now with the YouTube channel. Mm. I love make. I love. I avoid the constant through my life, which I did on my Monday musings mm-hmm. uh, 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 recently. Is <laughs> video making's been a constant, making videos. Um, that's going on for thirty odd years now. Um, so that's been especially the, pod, the the video diaries I do now on my on this channel. I love doing them. Mm. Could do with a few more hits. Um, but hey, but yeah, that that's that's where I'm sort of like oh, okay, yeah, I found my niche. Found my niche. Was there anything that you look back in your life and you go, oh, I wouldn't mind giving that a go, stab at? No. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, a little bit more travelling would have been good. I've done a bit of travelling, don't get me wrong. Worked mm. in America and um, all that kind of thing. Um, but I'd like to do a bit more travelling. Well, so I said I'm going to do a bit more travelling. And you never wanted to marry and have children? Nope. Oh, oh God, that's, that's it. All, my, all the feelings going, Mark, no. <laughs> no, marriage, I said it. I find it a very bizarre concept. Um, I know a lot of friends who are happy who aren't married. Mm. Um... Oh, no, but I'm not having to go married. If you want to get married, fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. I just don't understand the concept of marriage. I also think as well, like, when we look back on our lives and we think, I really thought I was going to go this way, I really thought this was going to happen, and when it doesn't, has it left us, or has it, you know, with that feeling of, like, discontent or I wish it had? Very good question. I don't feel discontent at all. mm I'd probably feel discontent if I had got married. Mm. But do I have any income close to it? No. Well, I've been trying to, like, you know... Oh, I'm until... The, uh, well, I might make an exception with the you. The Tiffany, yeah. honey. Tiffany, Tiffany. Cartier. I yeah. keep he- dropping those know, hints, and you're like, We're, I work in um, theatre, darling. Um, yeah, well, well, uh, you are making the exception, probably. Thank you, baby. Very good. Um, me? Absolutely not. None of my life has turned out the way I wanted it to be. It really hasn't. I'm still waiting, I think, for that big pan like the Kenny Everett thing out mm. the sky with the finger or yeah, whatever. Yeah. That is not Kenny. That is kind of what I've been waiting for. I mean I, I never thought I'd go and live in Canada. Mm-hmm. I never thought I'd be married, you know, twice. Um and I never thought I would I wouldn't have children. And, you know, I lost mm-hmm. I lost yeah. two babies. Um and that will always be with me, the fact that, you know, I will never sadly down here mm. meet them um but you can't you know there's nothing you can do you've just got to move on mm. you've got to move forward and um i'm you know i like who i am and i think if i hadn't gone for all that you know i wouldn't be who i am now um i'm still learning i'm still in that big game but i'm being so lucky as well like my through having my health issues as well because oh. i've had health issues over the years that health issue has put me on another road to another road another road so training to be a counsellor doing the clairvoyance um, helping people if I had gone down the road that I thought I'd done I wouldn't have been able to I wouldn't have helped those people I wouldn't have made hopefully a teensy weensy bit of difference but I think now I've had the taste of what really did feel like home to me Mm -hmm. it's kind of like that's where I want my life to go so now the biggest question is from this age onward where do we hope our life to go Um, I think the most important thing going forward is taking care of your health Mm. that's the most important thing absolutely I do a few health hacks you know um, you know I want to be I want to love to get to 90 I'm still Fit and well, there's no reason you can't be. There's mm. no reason, and it's also never too late to take control of your health. Absolutely, never too Absolutely. late. And I do believe not everything is a pill and an operation. You know, no. there's a lot of health hacks. I mean, I, you know, I say I do fasting, I do a lot of breath work, all these little things. Breath work, especially, is so important. How you breathe. And then there's the wine. And then there's, what, there's well, the wine. Darling, yours is empty. As oh usual, no, oh, there's no. the wine. We'll have some in for the next one. Um, You'd be very proud of me. I had wine today. For thank lunch. you. I should have bought some in. You should. I am very, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had some yesterday actually in the pub lunch. It's about one o'clockish. Oh, yes. I mean, did, you have a, did you have a large glass, darling? I did have a large glass, darling. With a straw? Yeah, yes. With, no, not with a straw. No, and water as well. Very nice. But would you? What do you hope to achieve in the next part of your life? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I'm going to be a bit of an old hippie here. Enlightenment. Good question. Good. Good answer. Enlightenment. Um, 
controlling the way we think and how our think how our thoughts create our reality. So I'm going a bit down that mm-hmm. egotistical route here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the most important thing that everybody wants should have deserved to be everybody to be happy. I don't think you can be happy all the time. I think that's an unrealistic option. Isn't that an amazing thing when you ask people what they want? They go, I just want to be happy. Yeah. And it's like, what does happiness that hits look you like? like? A, like a fist, what does happiness it? look like? Yeah, um, bliss. Yeah. You can't be, but you can't be blissful all the time. It's no. impossible. Because no. you have life has ups and downs. But I look at it. I've said this before. I look at people, some of my friends who are just happy all the time. Mm. And it's interesting going back about your thoughts, great reality. I find they have very few problems. Life seems to sort of always be on their side yeah. because they're always happy. They send out positive emotions. Some people, do, some people do seem to have an easier life, and and they don't have the, the you know mm. the great highs and lows. And you think I must have never had a lot of highs and lows yeah. recently. All right, something I've never spoken about um, mm. was a bit of a low, but you know. And the thing is. The low, without the lows, you wouldn't appreciate the highs. You wouldn't appreciate the highs, no. And I think when we're younger, we don't actually take that into consideration. True. It's all about, oh, you know, life's really depressing or it's really hard. But it's like gratitude. Uh, I'm so grateful to find myself here or to have this person or to have this in my life, you know. And I think as you get older, one thing that I've learned, even though my life didn't hasn't gone in that way as of yet, um, is the hope and the also the faith... Uh, even if it's like damage sometimes and it goes up and down that I will achieve it because I've always been like I always say it's a very famous comment of mine if you ever seen Locke out of Lost he says don't tell me what I can't do and that's the same as me if you tell me you ca- I can't do something I'll like really if someone said for two things there if someone said you can't do that I question them as a friend anyway mm-hmm. um, but going back to something you said um, a word I, I do pretty much every day now is gratitude gratitude yeah. Um, thank you for the healing. Thank you. Thank you for mm-hmm. oh, even if I'm driving along. Yes, I might sound a bit soppy to some people. If it's a beautiful day, thank you for this beautiful morning. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it, because the thing is, what you put out, you get back. Yeah. If you're if you're grateful, you're saying thank you to something, even if it hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. This is the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza again. Who I've I mentioned quite a lot. I mm-hmm. love his work. Um, you're putting it out there. If you pray, sorry, people who are religious. I've got I've just got to point this out. If you're praying, you're praying for something that hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. That's not there. You know, so when you're uh, doing gratitude, it's if you've already got it. Though, as, as though you already received it. Yeah, that's why it's so powerful. If I do that, I start feeling a little tingle when I'm doing gratitude. Little tingle. Little tingle. Would you like to explain on that little tingle little what it tingle. feels like? Um, it's like when I go in sometimes into you know a place and I finally feel the atmosphere. Go, like, oh, yeah. that kind of thing. But yeah, gratitude's incredible. That's such a powerful tool. I mean, for me, there's still things I'd like to achieve. So I'd, I'd like to. I still want to emigrate. That's a massive one for me, although Bye. you'll have to just come in the suitcase. Oh, well. You know? Canada, Canada's lovely, but it just doesn't appeal to me. Well, that's because it's cold. Yeah, I don't do cold. I'm all um, Florida Keys. You just have to do summertime. Yeah, summertime in Canada. I mean, Canada's beautiful, don't yeah. I've got friends in Canada. But I'm also not, uh, you know, if something else came along, another country come along and it was the great opportunity, I probably might take it. Um, I'd like to also, like, spend my life with someone really special actually ex- extraordinary special cheers you know <laughs> well you, you know i'm still waiting darling and um and i'd like to travel yeah to me travel 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 and i'd also like to have more do my own business as well that's something i really want mm-hmm. to achieve more of um and make a difference and people say make a difference what that mean it's like you know when i when i pass on i don't have any children i'll never have an grandchildren or anything like that so Your DNA do, stops there. Yeah. So what do I leave behind apart from photographs and a few videos and stuff like that? So I'd like to leave something behind that either makes a difference for someone else. But so that's what I'd like to still achieve. And 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 I still think that do we have, do we, do we have that that ability to hope and faith as we are now that it's going to happen? I, th- mm. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could be having this conversation to be eighty years old, and it still applies. Mm. You're never, you're never too old. I know people say say it, and it is, it's so true. It's, you're never too old. You're Wasn't it Judge old. Judy that said, "Whatever age you are, Who? she kept Judge Judge Judy." Oh, yes. I know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was like, "If if you're sixty, it's never too late. If it's seventy, you're never too late. If you're eighty, you're never too late." You know, and it's like I saw an interview uh, recently on uh, with Liam Gallagher, who just turned fifty oh, from wow. Oasis. Obviously, Liam Gallagher on his own right now, and he goes, he goes, "Well, how do you feel about being 50? He Goes, "No, man, you know what? I don't." 
doesn't matter if you're four, doesn't matter if you're eight, doesn't matter if you're 50. Life's great, I love life. Mm. You know, I thought that was a really good attitude. All right, it's a millionaire, so of course you're going to love life. But yeah, I really thought that was a cool attitude. And the one thing I suppose that comes up is the great mortality clock that we all know is looming there. Because the one thing you... I'm just going to say, it's a very true statement, though. The one thing we know when we're born, we're going to die, right? But we just don't know when, thankfully. But it's like, I'm terrified of that. Imagine it's a superpower, though. Ricky Gervais said this. Imagine he said once came out, doing, finished off a gig, and said, I hope you will die. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you will die in your sleep. And he meant it in a really nice way. Yeah. If you knew, you didn't know when you were going to die, but you are going to die in your sleep, that's a superpower. I'm not sure I'd want to do that, unless I had everything sorted out behind me. But no, just saying you're not going to die of you know, some tragic accident or yeah. an illness or something. But you're still in your sleep at some point. You could be 105, you know. What a way to go. Yeah. I'm not sure. But then your consciousness goes on anyway, so. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to leave the, I'm not going the anyway. blue planet yet. I'm not going anywhere. I love, I love this planet. So what are you hoping for? What age? I've never thought about it. I want to be into my hundreds. Are you going to be one of those like, yeah, old gits? No. No. That uh, that ages you, Mister. Can I have a football? Yeah, that age. Yeah, that ages you. <laughs> that ages you. Um, I, I've got friends who are in their twenties. Yeah, you know, as a friend of mine, like she's she's only nineteen, but she's in like an old soul, and I'm she, I'm in awe of her. Yeah, an old soul though, an old grumpy git. <laughs> yeah, she's an old soul, and she's so wise. She's so wise, and even though she's only nineteen, I'm like, what? Well, how did this happen yeah. like you know she, she's I don't know whether the generations get older like than we were at 19 but they definitely seem to like they seem to have a more they know what they want to do and they want to go and achieve a lot of them seem to be more like this now than we were but then maybe the opportunities have changed yeah I, I think they have them you know even since we were growing up I think you know we have much more opportunities than our grandparents did and their parents did yeah um, you know we can go travelling at the touch of the hat mm-hmm. um I think there's a little bit of a dumbing down of society, though, especially with you know TikTok and social media and everything. No, no one really reads anymore. And it's uh, so I'd be interested to see how that plays out in the future. And, and here's an interesting one to end on, but it's like, what what do you feel like you um, when you leave this earth? Yeah, it's just my phone. When uh, when you leave this earth, what do you feel like you you may not have done? Will you feel like bad that you haven't achieved that? Do you think? No. Yes, I think I would. Yeah. I think I think I would actually feel um, bad that I, if I hadn't achieved some of it. Okay. But you don't have that feeling. No, not really. And that's because you go with the flow. I go with the flow. Interesting. I know friends are always. We're trying to wrap this one up. Friends are always busy. We've got projects. Always busy, 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 busy. And I think. I never just stop and smell the roses. Mm. And you need to. Yeah. Always got projects on and projects on. Fine, brilliant, been great, fantastic, absolutely. But you just don't stop. Yeah. That's not good that's not good for your for your well being. What is the one thing that you, you hope you achieve before you leave this you, this planet? Um And I know you said enlightenment, but what do you you personally want to achieve as a man? Um I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not ambitious that way. Mm-hmm. That's why I've never... I mean, I've been in the same job 18 years. You know, I'm not ambitious that way. Some would say you're loyal. No, I don't do a loyalty. I'm just not... I'm just not um, I've worked in the same industry pretty much, apart from a couple of years since 1995. It, yeah. So you don't actually know, like, what you would... You know, if before you left, you'd be like, I really want to achieve that right. as, as a guy. A goals. Right. Never been like that. Never been like that. Wow. I don't, that. That's not in a sort of weird way. I just don't, mm. just don't think about it. Um, what would I like to have achieved? Um, to see... And the, travel more. Maybe travel more. I'd like to see the great wonders of the world. Mm-hmm. I've seen a couple of them already. I'd, I'd like to go and see things like Egypt oh, and yes. also um, the Grand Canyon. Three times. Three times. Oh, I know. I'm so, so jealous. And also, um, is it Persia? Or Persia, or, yeah, yeah. I'd like to go and do that. Or, all the old... You know, I'd like to go and see um, Charleston and Georgia and all that sort of area of America. But I also like to go to, you know, I'd like to actually see the great wonders of the world because Mm. then I go, I've done it, I've seen it. Because those are things I think you need to go and see and appreciate how small our lives are, Mm. even though we're just specks. When you go and see something that's still sitting there from 
you know, thousands of years ago. It's a good thing to wrap up on. Uh, Carl Pilkington, Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington, when he went out, he probably saw his show, The Idiot Abroad, and he goes, he's looking at the Great Wall of China, which is one of the Seven Wonders, mm-hmm. and he goes, I mean, why is it called the Great Wall? I'll decide if it's great or not. It might be an, the, an all right wall of China. Yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> yeah, quiet. it is a good point. Yeah, it might be an all right wall of China. It's mostly, it's actually mostly a Victorian building anyway because it's mm. uh, being made up. So, yeah, so what so, about you guys? Yeah, have what you, about have you? you achieved something? You, have you anything in your life you think, oh, I'd still like to do that? It's just about what age you are or has everything planned out the way you wanted. And what things do you want to achieve before, you know? Yeah, you leave this blue More, planet. This mortal core. Although, do we, our consciousness might leave here, but yeah. our body bodily remains will stay on Earth. Our consciousness is Wendy and Mark. Yeah, how many people are actually? I think only three people have actually not died on this planet. Uh, Gene Roddenberry, Nichelle Nichols, and someone else. Um, Jane, Jimmy Doohan from Star Trek. Their, their ashes are in space. How aren't what they? a wonderful way to go! Actually, oh, fantastic. I'd love to do that. Same here. I always thought with my ashes. I'd like them to be put into a firework and fired into some of them, not all of them, but because I'd like the others to go somewhere else. But I'd like to fire some of them in a firework and go up what, with a bang. With a bang. Give it a bang, darling. Which we're going to do on this podcast. We're going to get out of the bang. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and all that normal stuff. If you're listening on Spotify, well, Hello. hopefully we might get a few <laughs> more hits on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> but until next time, it's goodbye from Wendy. And goodbye from me. See you soon. See you next time. Bye.